Road 96 flew under my radar. Thankfully, my friends have a good sense for the kinds of games I like. Cheers, Luke. If you'd like to give Road 96 a try, you can. It's included with Game Pass as of the making of this video. We're taking a look at the game on Xbox Series S. If you'd like to recommend us a game, comment below and let us know. And if you like what we do here, consider subscribing. We will also note that this video is spoiler free, as always. And with that, we're a thousand miles from the border and on our way to letting you know if Road 96 is worth your time. Road 96 feels like a late spiritual successor to Oregon Trail. The goal here is to make it across the border and out of your tyrannical country. Each run is procedurally generated and will have you running into a supporting cast of characters on the road. You'll have to make some hard choices on your journey and decide where you stand on the looming election day. And if you don't make it, you're done for good. The gameplay here is broken up into episodes, which all contain a bit of story and some sort of gameplay section. A fair chunk of the gameplay is standard point and click conversations, but there's a lot of variety when the game shifts to gameplay. You play football, there's a few rhythm sections, action shooting sections, puzzle shooting sections, a section where you get to go wild with a baseball bat, or beat a carny at his own game. All of the systems here are pretty simple, but the variety kept me engaged the whole way through. There's a lot done with the simple point and click gameplay, and I appreciate it a lot. You also have an energy meter to manage, and I like how this allows for adaptive difficulty on the player's part. At the start of each run, you'll have the choice between three teams, each with different starting locations, situations, cash and energy. Any form of travelling costs energy, and it can only be regained by resting or eating. I like this system, as it's never intrusive, there's always someone to pick with high energy, but if you do want difficulty, it is present and adds some extra urgency in getting to the border. The game also features permanent upgrades. I think these hit a nice balance between being believable in a story sense and expanding your options in later runs. I'd also like to give special mention to the border crossing sections. There's always a few options on how to get across, and each one was wonderfully tense. Whereas your time on the road can feel a bit like a cozy trip, the border crossings ramp up the stakes to 11. Once again, these utilise standard point and click gameplay to create some really interesting sections. I do have some gameplay issues. In some sections, I'd get a bit lost on where I was supposed to be looking or what I was supposed to be doing. The game doesn't always do the best job of directing your eyes where they need to be. I do like the choice to not have any form of objective markers. It leads the gameplay to feeling more organic. I don't, however, like the choice to force you to partake in episodes as you encounter them. It'd be nice to have additional options to take extra rest or just carry on your way. I think this would strengthen the every man for himself path and give the player a bit more agency in who they want to be. Some conversation sections are really awkward when it comes to selecting the line of dialogue you want. The dialogue choice boxes move with who you're talking to. In car sections, this is fine as the characters are not moving, but when characters are walking around, the choices bob up and down and it becomes very easy to select the wrong thing. This compounds as certain dialogue choices actually have an effect on the story. Finally, menu controls are horrible. Cursor menus are just the worst. On PC, this shouldn't be an issue, but if you're playing on console, you're going to have a bad time. Overall though, I'm pretty impressed. The gameplay here isn't massively deep, but I really enjoyed the variety, and I think the game does a great job at balancing downtime, tension, and everything in between with the gameplay systems present here but there were some poor decisions made and some elements of the game where things could have been streamlined a bit more. With all that in mind, we're giving Road 96 a 4 out of 5 for gameplay. For the most part, Road 96 looks and sounds fantastic, but there are some problems. We're going to start with the soundtrack, because the song choices here are frankly phenomenal. I've never heard of any of them, but every single song here adds to the atmosphere wonderfully, and almost had me feel as if I was on a casual road trip rather than fleeing the country. Plenty of the tracks here will be getting added to my Spotify playlist. I'd also like to make special mention of the song that plays in the area that precedes the border. It hits the perfect tone of calm before the storm.
Environments look fantastic and are stylized with simple shaded textures. I was reminded a lot of Firewatch. Once again, the game is taking simple design and utilizing it well to set the scene. There were plenty of times where I just stop a conversation or what I was doing just to look around and soak in the view. Petria manages to feel like a real place with lone but interesting roadside locations. Sound design is relatively simple, but once again, everything here adds up to build even more immersion. I felt that the sound of the world did a lot to prop up the rougher animations. Character models look good, everyone has a distinct look, but character animations are pretty rough. In game, everything felt pretty janky. Animations are a bit better in cutscenes, but not massively. This is the sort of thing that can pull you right out of the world and the story, and it is an issue that encompasses the entire game. I really dislike the choice to not give the player a character model. You do get a silhouette, but in game you're just floating. It feels really odd. I do like this choice to have characters eyes go red when they're crying. It takes the load off of the rough animation and clearly conveys emotion. This is a good example of knowing your technical limits. Menu UI is wonderfully stylized, but still very functional. The collectible icons look great, and I love the collectible cassettes with their unique designs. Overall, Road 96 is getting a 4 out of 5 for art direction. For the most part, everything here is very good, but the rough edges are very rough, and have a pretty big effect on pulling you out of the world. I'm here at our nation's border under National Mountain, the site of the Black Brigade terrorist attack in 86. If you Road 96 tries to juggle a lot of narrative elements, but I think it falls apart under its massive scope. The world building sets the scene that Petria is in a pretty rough state, but there is an election coming up. Some people want democracy, some people want revolution, and some people just want to leave and save themselves. You play as an unnamed teen, who is attempting to cross the border and flee. Along the way, you will run into a colourful cast of characters and find out how they all factor into what will unfold on election day. I really like the presentation of the story, this whole idea of running into people along the road, having an experience with them and then moving on is really interesting, but it does create narrative issues. Because the story is procedurally generated, it cannot establish a good flow. The game tries to fix this by having certain pivotal narrative events occur at the end of runs, but the lack of solid setup hurts these moments. The overall storytelling is also very on the nose. The tyrannical president is literally called Tyrak for crying out loud. There is some nuance present, but it's never truly dug into. Tyrak is painted as mega evil, Flores is painted as a democratic saviour, and the revolution is the middle ground. The nuance comes less from the overall narrative, and more how the characters are connected to each other. And that neatly loops us back around to what kept me engaged with the narrative the whole way through. The characters. Everyone here is distinct, and tied to the rest of the cast in interesting ways. Everyone is a bit of an archetype, but they are all fleshed out, and I enjoyed hanging out with everyone. Even Sonya, who mellows out and gets a bit of depth eventually. Jared is definitely nightmare fuel though. Just tell him you like dinosaurs, okay? Exposition is handled pretty well. Characters will quickly give you the reminder points of their story every time you meet them, but this works because A, you're a totally different person in each run, and B, it takes the stress of having to juggle seven storylines away from the player without getting overbearing. There's even some great smaller details. You can call home on a payphone and you get a little interaction. This is such a small choice that makes the world feel much richer. The endings also seem very anticlimactic. You get a cutscene, then a choice, then a voiceover. The ending I got seemed to make absolutely no sense to the choices I made along the road, and the whole thing didn't leave a great final impression. I'd also like to touch on the length of the game. I made it to the border with every run. And that meant that by the end of the game, I had not finished the majority of the stories. I'm not sure how to fix this issue without taking away from the procedural generation of the story, but it is worth mentioning as it only fuels the narrative disconnect present at the end of the game. Overall, the narrative here is getting a 3 out of 5. Everything is a bit on the nose, and the endings are a mess, but the character interactions kept me engaged the entire way through. I was always looking forward to who I'd run into next and what I'd learn about them. The episodic narrative makes for a very interesting presentation and works well to make the whole thing feel like a road trip. 
Rode 96 is a solid content offering, backed by some decent settings, but we did have some pretty big technical issues. Content wise, you're getting 7 storylines to experience, broken up into 6 episodes. There is a new game plus mode, so you can go back through with your permanent upgrades. In terms of settings, there are some nice tweaks. There are sliders for master, SFX, voices, ambience and music volume. Controls can be completely remapped. There is a sensitivity slider, and you can invert each axis separately. There are also sliders for selection and run speed factor. Subtitles can be enabled and have a size slider. There are no further options, but all of the subtitles in-game are nice and readable, with a clear font and background. You can also scale the size of interaction boxes with a slider. Vibration can be toggled, and there are major language options. Unfortunately, I had some major technical issues during my playthrough of Road 96. One of these issues was so consistent that I actually just thought it was a poor decision on the developer's part. Everyone in this game sounds like they are talking at you through a tin can, and it sounds awful. Like I say, I genuinely just thought this was a case of the game being low budget or adding a weird filter over all of the voice acting. Nope, this is a bug that affects the entire game and has not been fixed since release. There are a few quick fixes found online, but this needs a proper remedy, as it is a really major issue. My ending cutscene also completely bugged out, I just didn't get one. Just a blank screen with a voiceover. This is the last thing I see of your game folks, and it is not a good last impression. The specs here are getting a 3 out of 5. The content offering and settings are pretty on point. You're getting a lot of content, which is largely polished, with a lot of good tweaks. However, those bugs, especially the voice issue, knock the score down. It took me around 6 hours to complete row 96. Each run took between 30 to 90 minutes. You can break the game up into episodes, or even further down into each interaction. Overall, I found it very easy to fit row 96 into my free time, but I did run into a slight issue that I would like to make you aware of. At the end of some interactions, you are given some downtime and left to choose what you do next. You would think that the game would autosave at these spots, as it is a natural moment of downtime for the player. In my experience, it does not. You need to load into the next interaction for the game to autosave. I quit out at one of these moments, and then had to replay the interaction I'd played already when I came back. It's not a massive issue, but it is something to be aware of. During gameplay, my time felt respected, and I like the optional New Game Plus as it gives some reason for replayability outside of just making different choices. Hard drive footprint is a comfortable 14GB. This isn't tiny, but it also isn't so massive that you'll need to be wary of it if you have slow internet or data caps. Road 96 is getting the full 5 out of 5 on our commitment scale. That one issue I mentioned is not enough to knock a full point off, and for the most part, the game does a solid job of respecting your time and hard drive. Freedom. Nothing is more important, but there are many others in Petra still looking for it. Road 96 is worth your time. Fundamentally, this is just a really interesting gameplay experience. The game does buckle a bit under its grand scope, but the small moments make it a fantastic rainy day game. Outside of the tense border crossing sections, it's just fun to hang out in this world and with the characters. So pack a bag and get ready. The journey to Road 96 is long, but ultimately worth it. it feels so